feel like I hadn't seen you in forever, Jeff. <laughs> oh, you guys just, I don't even recognize most of you. All right, guys, I thought we had a productive day, um, trying to clean up some of the small things. Um, uh, any questions? in his hip um, obviously you're not playing Sunday so were you guys taking a just a super cautious approach there yeah pretty much just uh, giving him a break um, you know physically um, just trying to get his body back a little bit Did you do further testing yesterday everything come back clear? Uh, everything was clear the other day yeah we didn't see, uh, or at least I didn't see Joe Schobert out there something going on it's a personal personal reason uh, had a new bye week. Well, of course, you've been in a lot of bye weeks in the past. Uh, you typically uh, all get all year. Either as a uh, as a staff and uh, go over position by position and uh, have serious talks about whether you need to make any adjustments or changes. Yeah, I think we do that on a week to week basis, um, but more so uh, during the bye week. We try to do self evaluation, self scouting, tendencies, things like that. Um, I think that's pretty standard across the league. Uh, try to eliminate some of the tendencies you may have. Um, if you feel like you can get a better in an in a area, you try to do it. You try to work on those things, uh, whether it be personnel or schematically. Um, I think that goes uh, uh, that way from a week-to-week -week basis also. It's just you have more time to do it and reflect longer on it during the bye week. That you haven't come out of uh, the uh, the first six games before the bye uh, where you want to record-wise. Uh, is there more to talk about than usual uh, in, t in terms of beginning to where you thought you might be? Well, no matter what the record would be, uh, if you're not taking the same approach, uh, then I think you're shortchanging yourself uh, because that means you think you're good enough. Um, so whatever, it doesn't matter what our record record is, we'd be doing the same thing. When you were the offensive coordinator, you said on several occasions that you would uh, meet with um, the, the players and ask them what kind of things do they like to run, what kind of things are they comfortable with. How much of that are you doing this year uh, as the play caller? Uh, we get input from our guys all the time. Um, you know, it comes down to executing and coaching it better. Do you feel like um, during this bye week, you or, or anyone else needs to look at any of Baker's mechanics at all to see if any, anything is, is different? Uh, I th again, I think that's an ongoing um, process and thought. Um, I mean, that's part of coaching. Um, that's part of his self-evaluation. Um, you know, all that is constantly going on, not just because it's a bye week. On the block punt on Sunday, the guy that blocked it said they felt they would 100% get one because they didn't think that, that you guys protected well. Um, I mean, have you been seeing that leading up to this game, or is that just an outlier? I don't, you know, I think you, it's easy to say that after you do it. Um, but we understand what the problem was. We understood what the problem was going into the game. Uh, specifically, that block was worked on during the game, course of the game, and we didn't execute. So, uh, yeah. Time to have uh, Kareem Hunt, obviously, is not back yet, but it's getting uh, – Fairly close, and you have uh, two. You know, we're going to have to talk about it. Uh, is is that something that you'll uh, look into real seriously now? How uh, that process is going to happen, breaking him in? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been kind of an ongoing looking forward to uh, and having a plan started getting developed in the spring, uh, and of course it'll come to fruition. You know, here in a couple of weeks. We talked to you a lot about Richard Higgins yesterday, referring that Seattle game. He said. Today, he thought he could have played against the 49ers. Um, so could you comment on that? Um, I saw him in practice. Um, I have to make a decision every week uh, whether I think a guy's healthy enough to play. Um, he was not going to play against the 49ers. There's a lot of uh, Higgins and his, uh, his playing time to date, you know, granted he's coming off an injury and all that and there are other reasons, but there's a lot of why Callaway's uh, on the field, the fact that he has the speed to create uh, matchup problems that, uh, you know, Richard, uh, everybody knows, including himself, he's not as fast as Callaway. Well, you're kind of asking two different questions. Um, Antonio does have speed, um, depending on who you ask, 
Uh, it could be faster than Hig, but if you ask Hig, it's probably not. But anyway, I'm being facetious there. This, um, but uh, the reason why um, Hig didn't play had nothing to do with Callaway. The reason Hig didn't play is we were coming into a bye week, and I think one more week uh, would benefit him greatly. On uh, the matchup thing, though, is, is it uh, fair to say that Callaway is a matchup problem for other teams? Uh, we're going to try to put our guys constantly in situations where they can win and then let them go win, or at least attempt to win. Uh, I think Callaway's speed does have an element to the game uh, that not a lot of people have. Um, but again, the speed does nothing unless you are in the right place and you catch the ball. So uh, that's kind of an all-encompassing question there. Uh, Kareem, have you? I know he's not allowed to be in the building. Have you had contact with him throughout this, or somebody from the organization? Uh, it's not legal for us to have contact with him right now. And we talked to Greedy and Denzel today. Both of them felt really optimistic about coming back against the Patriots. Have you seen them look like they're just about ready? And what kind of a boost could that be for you guys? Yeah, I think they're getting close. Um, you know, we'll wait and see. Um, you know, we don't have to put an injury report out until next Wednesday, so uh, they're getting close. In terms of Higgins, you know, saying he felt he could have played against 49ers and the Seahawks and all of that, uh, I would imagine that you probably appreciate a player wanting to get back out there as soon as he possibly can and you having to be the one to say, I got to sit There's no doubt. Um, you know, nobody ever questions Higgs' uh, heart and motivation, his desire to win, his desire to do things the right way. Uh, all those sorts of things. So, you know, I'll be glad uh, when he's back full time. You know, what role do you play in in coaching Baker up from kind of the mental side of things? I mean, you know, he's had some struggles. You know, you talk about mechanics and stuff, but success breeds success. So, how, after he comes off a game like that, how do you go about getting him mentally right as much as physically? Well, you spend time with him. Ryan uh, Lindley spends time with him. Uh, so, you know. One of his strengths is battling back mentally and being mentally tough. Play quarterback in this league, you have to be mentally and physically tough, and Baker's that. Um, you approach it the same way you do off of a good game. You try to make the corrections, um, try to try to sh pinpoint areas of concern from the standpoint of where his eyes are and things like that, and you get better from it. Um, but yes, I definitely have a hand in it. Uh, he has a hand in it. Ryan has a hand in it. Uh, several people have a hand in it. Um, but also what you, you have to understand with a quarterback, some of these things he has to figure out himself. All right, You can tell him all you want, but until Homer Smith used to describe playing quarterback, uh, it's like taking a thousand pictures in your, in your mind. Um, and that's during the course of one play. So when you build those, continue to build that inventory of pictures, that's how you develop experience. Um, and those are things you just have to live through and go through and, and, and get through. Um, and hopefully you can get through some of them more successfully than not. But sometimes you just have hard lessons to learn. Um, I always found it fascinating that that's how Homer Smith described it. And he's one of the best, um, I know one of the best quarterback guys I've ever been a part of and very well known in this business and, and uh, influential in my life from the standpoint of, of coaching quarterbacks. and and learning the process of, of uh, quarterbacking. Um, one more on Higgins. Since you were This is your last year. Okay. <laughs> Since, you know, you had, uh, obviously were calling the plays last year. What, what do you think is that um, really good chemistry, it seems, that uh, Baker and, and Hig have? What, what do you just... What do you I think, think with Hig, it's uh, the comfort of knowing that he's going to be there, uh, really where he's supposed to be. Some of the uh, comfort level a quarterback sometimes needs is just knowing that you're going to be there, and then when you're there, you're catching the ball. Um, because then your room for error increases playing quarterback. So I think Higgs always kind of given um, whoever the quarterback is in there, it's just so happens. Higg played pretty good the year before last, too, when we came in. Um, so I think whoever the quarterback is uh, kind of gives him that comfort, comfort level. Point a few times lately that you know that I that I think that Baker probably could use some more of you because that worked so well last year when you guys were just working so closely together. 
Um, is that you know, is that something that you're considering spending more one-on-one -on -one time with Baker yourself? Um, I think uh, I think we have a good setup, and uh, I'm really not going to comment on anything that we're doing different now than we were at the first part of the year. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Just, you know, we have some good coaches here. Sometimes you, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you reach people differently. And, uh, you know, we have a good setup here. It's, it's about us going on the field and, and getting better and making plays. Baker do anything other than stretch and go through, like, calisthenics? Uh, like before we got to the field, or? No, like when you got on the field, he stretched, he did the karaoke, all that stuff. Did you get, yeah, did he, you do anything? He else? stretched and uh, loosened up and uh, was mentally over. We, we worked some of the offense today through uh, different situations and was with me, um, you know, all during that process. So he was hooked up mentally. It's just, you know, this is, we got 10 games left. So we got to get him ready to play 10 games. Do you have any doubt? About New England for him? No. no you're not a doctor, but Last is, one here. is it in your uh, mind that uh, Mayfield definitely will be in, in better shape uh, physically when he comes back from New England than he has been uh, recently, let's say? Uh, how do you know I'm not a doctor? <laughs> I guess you said you uh, sold used cars. <laughs> okay. It wasn't used cars. It was new cars. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Uh, he's going to be in better uh, physically, uh, in better shape going into New England, yes. All right. And he'll be in a better place mentally, too.